While CitizenCon's been clogging up the news this past week, there's still plenty more development going on elsewhere in Star Citizen. From AI advancements to work on the new Moby Glass, I'm going to sum up all the interesting bits for you here. And if you like it and want more, consider subscribing and checking out my live stream four days a week. This is your monthly summary of Star Citizen development. Thank you for coming to my tomato talk. Last month in AI features, the team continued working on specific traits for different AI encounters, including the Sentry trait, which forces players to rely on stealth and defensive tactics, and the Reckless trait, which encourages players to be more aggressive against Berserker-type NPCs. There are also the more aggressive and cautious AI traits that use appropriate levels of cover, similar to other AI you may find in open-world games. They also developed context-specific search activities, such as AI maneuvering around and over vents, railings, and crates to make their search behaviors more realistic. This falls in line with the group search behaviors we've been reading about in previous monthly reports, showing how two NPCs can search through multiple rooms to try and find a target. More stealth gameplay received support, such as players being able to sneak around areas by wearing disguises or contextually appropriate outfits to get past members of certain factions. This is something we saw in the CitizenCon keynote in 2019, which seems to finally be getting developed for in-game use. The effectiveness of these devices will also depend on your behavior and distance from the investigating NPCs. They are going full-on immersive sim with the clothing and armor, it seems. The AI tech team finished their work on ladder navigation for AI, which means AI can now use ladders as players do. AI perception also saw some big improvements. Work was done to allow NPC ship pilots to target on-foot enemies by eyesight rather than radar, as well as ground NPCs the ability to track large objects like vehicles in order to spice up ground-to-air combat. Then sound perception saw some work. Just like with the disguises I mentioned, there's nuance to it. If each AI character has an invisible perception meter that needs to fill up for them to realize you are actually there, then the meter itself will be impacted differently based on your distance from the NPC and the magnitude of the force causing the noise, such as a gunshot or a footstep. The Vehicle AI team worked with vehicle features to build the ability for AI to perform attack runs on space stations, a particularly interesting necessity for the AI to have considering there are currently no scripted instances that this might need to occur besides Xenothreat. Along with most of the AI features we read about here, this is likely a feature that is more meant to benefit Squadron 42 for now than anything else. The animation team dedicated most of the month to multiplayer PU character sets of animations, including the Rescue Transportation gameplay AI. This would be a new gameplay loop that begins the people side of transportation gameplay, something that would eventually lead to the primary career of ships like the Genesis Starliner or 890 Jump. The character art team prepared new armors and progressed on an earth fashion set of outfits from the Stanton system. Concept character art worked on frontier outfits, medical armor, and creatures. The ship art team finished up the Corsair, experimenting with a new ship setup that triggers lights on the exterior for specific scenarios such as when landing. Additional support was given to the Drake Vulture single-person salvaging ship, and the Argo SRV progressed through the gray box, still months away from final art complete. The final art passed for another unannounced ship was completed. This ship sounds like it was a chance for them to really take some steps forward in the ship development pipeline, as they were able to push forward exterior lighting states, the artwork of countermeasures, and more. The final review of a new unannounced ground vehicle we've been hearing about was completed, it looks like this is the Greycat STV which came out during CitizenCon. A nice little cart meant for passenger transport and maybe a little bit of racing. The whole sea polish pass was completed, and the resource management pass on the Hammerhead continued, with a new gravity generator room being added. Work was also completed on an upcoming… variant. Look forward to hearing more about this soon. On the engine side of things, which I know almost nothing about, plenty of work continued on the Gen 12 transition. Cube Mac backdrops, light beams, water volumes, water reflections, and the big one, 
volumetric cloud rendering were all ported over to the Gen 12 renderer. We await more news to see how much of this will make it into 3.18 and if we'll be able to expect better optimizations in this next update. The character and weapons feature team continued work on the FPS device system, adding proximity and timer-based triggers for things like breaching charges and mines. They also began prototyping the flow for restraining players, which will be necessary for true bounty hunting as a profession. Or, uh, kidnapping. The gameplay features team worked on mining with the intent of improving the multi-crew mining experience. One opportunity they are pursuing is making sure using a ship like the Argo Mole will be more beneficial to the team than several prospectors. Work continued on resource management primarily with temperature control throughout ships, and the EU gameplay team supported their US-based counterparts on the cargo refactor. This is actually one of the only times we've heard about the feature in a monthly report. It's good to finally see some mention, and hopefully we'll get more details soon. The mission feature team began testing a simple change to combat logging to prevent the exploit. They also progressed on work in the new investigation missions archetype we've been hearing about recently and saw at CitizenCon, creating a mission that narrative can apply to multitude of spaceships and environments in the game to give us something more to do on a regular basis. The contract manager UI redesign began, and many new mission types were proposed for work up through next summer. The vehicle features team worked on the power and resource system and how they connect together, the aiming and gunnery system for vehicles, and the ship MFD system, which has bounced around for a couple of years now and will hopefully bring more clarity to the cockpit experience soon. The graphics team has completed an edge highlighting render pass that allows for occluded objects to show up as such when scanned in FPS mode. This will be used for other similar applications in the game like possibly highlighting important objects for new players. The Planet Tech team are currently delivering the Rastar V1 tool to the rest of the company for use. This tool can build and populate planetary environment modules ranging from outposts to derelicts to underground facilities to cities. This is a very important key part of increasing the speed at which planets and their various locations are added to the game. Many players wonder when these planets will start to feel less empty and be filled with more of these unique locations. This tool is a big part of that. Interestingly, we've seen that building out these cities and locations have gone all the way from some Minesweeper style sort of interface to an actual in-game overlay at this point. We expect to see some of the first major additions of this tool in the 4.0 update. The locations team joined the lighting team on filling out the art and design of Ruin Station, but also worked on the landing zones of Stanton, filling them out with some new animations. The narrative team worked on the new contract manager as well, and also worked on objectives displayed on your lens and visor system. They also continued connecting the improved new player experience. Alongside adding more faces into the game for character customization, the tech animation team explored geometric caches and Maya's deformation technology, hinting at the possibility of increased visual fidelity. Structural deformation through geocache is something that the team has experimented with before, dating all the way back to 2018 when this developer was speaking about breaching ships and how an explosion might open up the hull, most likely for Squadron 42 applications. Uh, uh, method for doing this, which is the geocache uh, Alembic uh, way, but that is a lot more expensive, there's a lot more uh, memory resources that is used there. So in conjunction with that and uh, this method here, we can blend these two together to make very uh, interesting and detailed destruction simulations. The UI team continued their year plus long push on the new star map, now adding interactive hollow volumes to the UI system. Very sci-fi. These will be applied both to ship radars and large holospheres on ships like the Idris or 890 Jump. I wish we had gotten some sneak peeks of this system at CitizenCon much like we did for the mini-map technology. 
but it seems they want this to be in a very good place before they start showing it publicly. The rework of the quantum travel system continued with a focus on the refractive elements which will emphasize the forming of the quantum bubble that wraps your ship as you spool up your drive. Tasty. And finally, a few new unannounced vehicles received some VFX work and some tweaks were made to the visuals and some new locations. A shorter month of progress, but filled with many details. As always, I consider the monthly reports to be the best way of knowing what's actually being worked on for the next few updates. And things like Gen 12, FPS scanning, quantum travel refactor, and resource management are good things to see. It's also nice to finally hear about the cargo refactor. We are yet to see if 318 can possibly live up to the hype, but this was a quick look behind the scenes. If you want more coverage on 318, make sure to subscribe here and on the second channel for regular updates, and come join the live stream to catch some gameplay. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>